Hi, I'm Simone Severini, Director of Amazon Quanto Technologies at Amazon Web Services. As a career academic, I spent a lot of time interacting with people working in quantum information science. As my colleague, Antia Lamas Linares, head of the AWS Center for Quantum Networking has said, academia is full of what we call hero experiments, where you make something work once, but maybe afterward it self-destructs or melts. The important thing is you showed something was possible. We all know that a lot of work is needed to go from science to useful technology. For me, joining Amazon about five years ago was an opportunity to help bridge the worlds of academia and industry and to help build technologies that will benefit our customers in the real world. While it's still very early days in quantum technologies, companies of all sizes have a unique role to play in the effort to move innovation forward. And our vision for this space harnesses talent from both academia and business. As I speak, we are executing against a strategy formed by four pillars. At AWS, we are customer obsessed. Ingrained in everything we do, we start with the customer and work backwards. This begins with Amazon Bracket, our quantum computing service we announced in 2019. We heard our customers loud and clear. They want a choice when it came to experimenting with quantum hardware. Startups like QERA, Oxford Quantum Circuits, Rigetti, IonQ, D-Wave, and Xanadu brought their hardware to Amazon Bracket. With Amazon Bracket, customers can learn and can keep an eye over an evolving technology that has many different physical implementations without upfront financial commitment and with the benefits from the AWS services they love. Customers can operate today prototype quantum computers securely, securely integrated with other resources like databases, machine learning services, and high performance compute. Beyond Amazon Bracket, we're also working on these three key initiatives. AWS Center for Quantum Computing, where AWS engineers and scientists are working with academia toward the long-term goal of building a fault-tolerant quantum computer. Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab, a professional services organization that helps customers research and identify the most promising applications of quantum computing for their business and get ready for the future. AWS Center for Quantum Networking, where AWS focuses on addressing fundamental scientific and engineering challenges with the goal of developing new hardware, software, and applications for quantum networks that connect and amplify the capabilities of individual quantum processors. Today, you'll hear from key members of our team from these pillars. I hope this will give you a bit more insight into our work here at AWS. First up is Jordan Sullivan from our Amazon Bracket team. Jordan. Thanks, Simone. Hi, I'm Jordan Sullivan, lead developer advocate for Amazon Bracket. Like Simone mentioned, at AWS, we're driven by listening to our customers, and we work backwards from their needs. When we first launched Bracket in 2019, we had a lot of customers telling us they were very interested in quantum computing, but couldn't easily access quantum hardware. Many customers couldn't directly contract with a quantum devices lab or couldn't commit to a large upfront spend. For customers who wanted to try out multiple different quantum computing modalities, the problem of access was multiplied. Bracket solved this problem by bringing together quantum hardware from ion traps to superconducting qubits to neutral atom arrays, all accessible through a unified API with pay-as-you-go pricing and no upfront commitment. The era of quantum computing that we're currently in is called Noisy Intermediate Scale Quantum, or NISC, a term which was actually coined by John Fresco. Being in the NISC era means that the capabilities of quantum hardware are limited by the presence of noise, which restricts the size of computations we can perform before the results turn into essentially garbage. So far, we know of one application with an exponential quantum advantage for NISC, which is learning about quantum states themselves by processing experimental data. However, 
Most researchers believe that we'll need full-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computers to solve commercially relevant problems on quantum hardware. In the meantime, customers are best positioned to get quantum ready by identifying use cases that are likely to have substantial speedups on fault-tolerant devices and testing out the capabilities of NISC devices as the hardware improves. We launched Bracket to accelerate exactly this type of work. We manage the orchestration and infrastructure to access quantum hardware so customers can focus on their applications. JP Morgan Chase, for instance, announced at reInvent 2021 their work exploring quantum algorithms on Bracket for portfolio optimization. Because of its problem structure, portfolio optimization is one of the applications expected to have an exponential quantum advantage when we have full-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computers. Large enterprise customers like JPMC are exploring small-scale quantum solutions now so that they can determine which aspects of commercially relevant problems are likely to be amenable to quantum advantage in the long term, as well as keep their finger on the pulse by continually testing the bounds of current generation hardware capabilities. With Amazon Bracket, you can compare different current generation quantum computing technologies side by side and switch between them with a single line of code. The integration with the rest of AWS means you can compare the quantum solution to one using state-of-the-art high-performance computing, or HPC, like AWS Batch or machine learning, like with Amazon SageMaker. These integrations can be very useful for independent software vendors who want to build products on Bracket. One example is the Classic platform, which is a high-level functional programming environment for generating quantum circuits without the need to explicitly define low-level gates. Classic integrates Bracket as its quantum backend, Amazon EKS to manage its containerization, Amazon Route 53 to handle end-user routing, and Amazon CloudWatch to monitor quantum tasks, to name just a few of the services Classic is built on. The advantage to using a truly integrated cloud-based quantum computing service shines through with software vendors like this. While our customers are exploring current generation quantum hardware on Amazon Bracket, we're also hard at work building our own at the AWS Center for Quantum Computing in Pasadena, California. Let me introduce you to James, who can share more about his work. Thanks, Jordan. Hi, I'm James Getters, Head of Product for Quantum Computing Hardware at AWS. I'm excited to be here today to share a bit more about the behind the scenes work we're doing in Pasadena, California to build our own quantum computer. The first thing I want to emphasize is that today's quantum computers are relatively primitive in their capabilities, despite the huge amount of new cutting edge technology that goes into them and the hype you may hear in the market. So a question you might ask is, why is AWS building a quantum computer today? Part of the answer is that building quantum computers is just really hard. So along with the quantum computing hardware, we have to develop the team to innovate and deliver the potential capabilities of quantum computers to customers. This takes time, and there's a lot for our teams to learn by building such systems firsthand, even in their early nascent state. The reality is that there's a lot of development work to be done before building a fully capable, fault-tolerant quantum computer. This is not just a matter of time and resources, but also requires discovery and invention. A second important reason that AWS is investing in quantum is that we believe we have a credible path towards a fault-tolerant machine, one capable of realizing the full potential of quantum comp computation. One grand challenge we are tackling head-on at AWS is the issue of error rates. Not only do we need to figure out how to scale quantum processors to larger sizes, measured in numbers of physical quantum bits, or qubits, but today's quantum computers are too sensitive to noise and too error-prone. This limits the complexity of the computation problems they can handle. There are two ways that we are approaching making better qubits at the AWS Center for Quantum Computing. The first is by improving error rates at the physical level, for example, by investing in new material development and chip fabrication techniques that can fundamentally reduce noise at the atomic scale. The second is through innovative qubit architectures that employ and are optimized for quantum error correction. Quantum error correction reduces errors, much like classical error correction techniques you find in high-density storage devices, by redundantly encoding information. In the quantum case, things are a little trickier and require a lot more overhead, but the principle is the same. We redundantly encode a qubit's worth of information into a block of physical qubits, forming what is called a logical qubit. 
This provides protection against errors that might occur in any one physical qubit. The challenge of implementing quantum error correction is truly enormous, as the required error rates are roughly nine orders of magnitude better than we have today at the physical qubit level. A brute force approach to closing this kind of error rate gap, focused on improving only the physical qubits themselves, would likely take 50 or more years. Luckily, quantum error correction acts as a kind of exponential lever, and as physical qubit performance improves even slightly, the logical qubit performance can improve dramatically. I expect with quantum error correction we can significantly speed up the development process of quantum computers, and that is our focus at AWS, and I am excited by the progress we have made so far. That being said, realistically, I believe we are still a decade or so away from quantum computers that can perform computations of commercial relevance, such as in materials design or chemical catalysis, that are forever out of the reach of today's classical computers. Another area of active research is working to understand what computational task quantum computers will be most suited for, and so there's much to learn on the application side as we develop the hardware. While we have a lot of innovation in front of us to be done in quantum computing, and we should be realistic about these challenges, I'm even more optimistic today about the prospects of realizing revolutionary quantum technologies than I was two years ago when I joined AWS. In tandem to developing quantum computing technologies and services, AWS is also focused on helping our customers prepare for a post-quantum future with quantum-resistant technologies. To hear more about that work, I'd like to pass the baton to David Livonian. Hi, I'm David Livonian, Senior Research Scientist at the AWS Center for Quantum Networking. While we're hard at work developing quantum computing technologies, AWS is also focused on helping our customers prepare for a post-quantum future. The security of our customers' data is job zero at Amazon. To us, this means anticipating what the future might hold and preparing our customers for potentially disruptive technologies. You may have heard of Harvest Now, Decrypt Later threats, where bad actors can gain access to data today, hold on to it, and decrypt when quantum computers become more powerful in the years ahead. AWS is working to proactively defend our customers against this threat. Quantum resistant communications is one of the many applications of quantum networks, which are systems for distributing entangled quantum bits to our customers. Quantum networking is also a complement to our investments in quantum computing, akin to how the conventional internet complements conventional computers. At the AWS Center for Quantum Networking in Boston, we're focused on addressing fundamental scientific and engineering challenges with the goal to develop new hardware, software, and applications for quantum networks that connect and amplify the capabilities of individual quantum processors. What does this mean exactly? Let me give you an example. In March, we announced AWS had completed our first trial of quantum secured communication in a customer environment. As part of this trial, we implemented a point-to-point -point quantum secured network in Singapore, setting up a link that connected two sites using a production grade optical fiber network. In collaboration with the National Quantum Safe Network at the Center for Quantum Technologies, Horizon Quantum Computing, and Fortinet, we successfully connected two QKD devices across buildings spread three kilometers apart connected by 16 kilometers of fiber, and set up a VPN tunnel that used both QKD technology and AWS edge compute hardware. We also recently worked with a large bank to trial eavesdrop-proof quantum communications to the cloud edge environment, leading the way for the financial sector to embrace quantum resistant security. For banks, exploring quantum networking will be critical for protecting financial transactions, customer data, and payments. As the world faces relentless threats to privacy and security, it's more important than ever for business leaders handling sensitive data to think about quantum networking. While today's pilots are small, they're vital steps towards exploring ways in which commercial off-the-shelf quantum technology performs in a real-world setting. We're excited about our progress so far, and we encourage you to watch this space as we make even more progress with our customers. Simone, back to you. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope you will have a great rest of the event.